Blake Hayes and I can't tell you how happy I am to hear your voice. Başrolünde ve yönetmen koltuğunda George Clooney'nin yer aldığı merakla beklenen The Midnight Sky 23 Aralık'ta Netflix'te yayınlanacak. How much have you picked up about the conditions on her? Kıyamet sonrası bir dünyada geçen The Midnight Sky, Kuzey Kutbu'nda yalnız bir bilim insanı olan Agustin'in hikayesini konu alıyor. George Clooney'nin canlandırdığı Agustin, çok geç olmadan Salı ile iletişim kurarak astronotların esrarengiz bir felaketin tehdit ettiği dünyaya geri dönmesini engellemeye çalışıyor. George Clooney'nin rolü için 12 kilo verdiği The Midnight Sky, Lil Brooks Dalton'ın çok sevilen Good Morning Midnight adlı romanından uyarlandı. Senaryosu? Mark Smith'e ait olan filmin dev isimleri George Clooney, Felicity Jones, David Oyelowo, Kyle Chandler ve Damien Bisher'la salgın koşulları nedeniyle çevrim içi buluştuk. Habertürk'e özel bu röportajda usta oyuncularla filmin detaylarını, Oscar yolculuğunu, salgın sürecini ve İstanbul'u konuştuk. Bugün ne yapsak da yine tarihi bir gün yaşıyoruz. Geçen yıl Irishman'den Robert De Niro, Al Pacino'dan sonra bu yılda Midnight Sky'la sevgili George Clooney'i ağırlayacağız stüdyolarımızda. Birazdan bizimle birlikte olacaklar George Clooney ve dört başrol arkadaşı. This is Lake Hazen Weather Station. <gülüyor> Lake Hazen, I can't tell you how happy I am to hear your voice. For some reason you're the only person who wants to talk to me. We've lost contact with NASA and everyone else. Do you have information on our transmission blackout? Lake Hazen, are you there? How much have you picked up about the conditions on Earth? We've received nothing. Hello from Istanbul. Welcome to Habertürk TV studios. Hello, how are you? Fine, and you? Well, we're good. We're isolated here, but we're good. Are you guys doing all right there? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have you ever been to Istanbul? Many Turkey? times. Many, many times. And I loved it. I, I, I think it's a gorgeous city with a great history. Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, what was the uh, reason that uh, triggered you to direct the movie? Uh, why did you decide to direct the movie? I liked, I liked the uh, story of the film. I liked the idea that we have uh, a planet that we need to take care of and humanity that we have to watch out for. I liked the idea that humanity itself is very fragile and that we as a country, as a world, uh, need to get away from all of these differences and hatred and find uh, ways to communicate and to love one another. And I thought that those were really good themes. Is The Midnight Sky a science fiction? How do you describe the film? Well, since the pandemic started, it's less fiction, unfortunately. Um, but So I guess it is science fiction because we've created a spaceship and those don't exist, the kinds we have. But um, but more than anything it's a it's a very personal story about uh trying to get home and trying to communicate with one another uh, how was netflix experience great they're good friends of mine uh i've hadn't worked with netflix before on a film i've done documentaries with them but uh but they were spectacular they uh they they were like working with any movie studio they're they uh it's much the same process and it was fun. How did Felicity Jones' pregnancy change the shooting? I think your decision is uh, revolutionary. It was interesting. You know, it was a surprise, as you know, and we were already shooting, so it's very late. But the idea of her being pregnant, once we decided that let's not try to hide it, it ended up being something that I think makes the film particularly the end of the film, uh, in, in infinitely more resonant and more uh, important because it's talking about the continua con continuum of life in a way that, uh, that makes us very proud, you know, and we're very proud. We were very protective of Felicity and her baby. Why does it take place in 2049? It's like we are living in that year due to pandemic. Is life imitating art? A little bit. 
Uh, I, I unfortunately, you know, there was no pandemic when we started. Uh, but once we got into the editing room, there was a pandemic, and it became very clear that the story of inability to communicate and inability to find your way home and inability to be with the people you love um, uh, very much resonates for right now. Yes. Uh, what was it like shooting in a real Arctic storm? It was, uh, well, let's say this. Iceland is beautiful. I want to start by saying that. And the peace, people of Iceland are fantastic. But it is not fun shooting in a uh, in a you know massive snowstorm like that but but I, it was exactly what we needed so we couldn't be happier with the results at the what stage of the shooting uh, did the pandemic begin how did the pandemic affect the movie we finished shooting february 5th or something the next week everything was shut down so we finished the shooting part of it. So all of the post-production, editing, music, everything was done here in the house, you know, like this, like you and I are talking. So it was, uh, it was unusual, you know. You are very interested in world uh, affairs. This movie is a good example. How do you see the future of the world? Well, I'm hopeful, you know, I see uh, I see light at the end of the tunnel for this vaccine. I see uh, the possibility that by the spring, we should be able to uh, uh, get a lot of people vaccinated, particularly people who are vulnerable. So I see then uh, economies being able to open up again, which I think is important. Uh, in my country, I see that we no longer have our head of state talking about the press being the enemy of the people, which I also think is very important. So I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in, uh, I have a lot of hope for the future. You have been nominated for Oscar in many different categories and you have won twice. What's your expectation with this movie? I don't, you can't have expectations for any movie. You try to make the best product you can. You know, I'm sure there are, there are awards for journalism and you don't have expectations when you do your job you just do your job and then if someone awards you, then that's very nice, but you don't have expectations for things like that. You're, you know, I, I feel the same way about my job. You know, we, that's what we do. We do this for a living. Which one do you like the most, directing or acting? I like directing more. Directing is fun because I get to boss all the other actors around. Thank you. Evet, şimdi Felicity Jones ve David Oyalovo bizimle birlikte bir merhaba diyelim. Hello from Istanbul. Welcome to Haber Türk TV Studios. Hi. Hello. Hello. Have you ever been in Istanbul? I I haven't. No, uh, not personally. Have you? I, no, I haven't. I haven't. Maybe uh, future. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, would love would love to hear great things. How was working with director George Clooney? Uh, a, a lot of fun. He's an incredibly um, funny man, um, and I and I I mean, in, in, you know, as a as a storyteller, um, he's also someone who doesn't take himself very seriously, and that's very refreshing for someone who is so admired across the world. Um, you know, any any. Um, any fear you may have or intimidation you may have because he's George Clooney goes away very quickly after you've been around him for a while and, and so that you know he's, he's a wonderful person to be around. Okay, uh, Felicity, uh, you were pregnant while uh, the shootings. Uh, how would you describe that experience? It was the first movie for your baby. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, yeah, it was it was very much part of George's process that he, he embraced, um, he embraced the pregnancy. He, he felt that it would be a wonderful addition, um, which was obviously a relief for me because, you know, I was worried that I'd lose my job. So it was nice to keep my job and be working with someone who was so positive and made it seamless and, um, and, and, and, a, and a joy. 
but but you know, like all the best filmmakers, you you have to work with what you have, um, and actually it's really special when you can be flexible and can adapt and can um, ultimately bring out the best from, from your cast. So throughout the entire shoot of this, um, George was always very agile in, in, in embracing the moment, um, which comes through in the, in the spirit of the film. The Midnight Sky takes place in 2049. It's like we are living in that year due to pandemic. Is life imitating art? Yes, very much so. And that and that's the right way round to, to say it, life imitating art, because we had done the art before <laughs> life decided to imitate it. We, we had finished uh, shooting The Midnight Sky and you know, we thought that we were making a sort of Despotian sci-fi movie that was rooted to a certain degree in fantasy. And, and here we are, it feeling more real than we could ever have anticipated. And also a film that really talks about our connection to each other. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a shame um, that, that we are so close to that 2040 something reality, but hopefully, it proves to be a lesson as to how to treat our planet going forward. What attracted you to uh, this role in the movie? How did you feel when you read your character in the script? Well, the, the film and the characters were exploring themes that have become, uh, unfortunately, very close to our, all of our um, hearts and minds, which is, those of isolation and loneliness and what it means to connect, what we value. Um, they're in an extreme situation where they're having to really navigate their way through what their lives mean. And I think that's what we always, I found intoxicating about the script and about the book was that it was um, an exploration to some extent of, of loneliness and aloneness and, and, and what one's priorities are. And you see that in George's character, that he is someone who's always prioritized uh, discovery in his working life over his familial connections and, and is reckoning with that. Um, and it's a very, very moving part of the film. And I think the fact that the film was able to pivot between these broader, big questions and then also function as an entertaining action film was, was what was so enticing about it. Okay, would you leave the world in such a situation? Um, no, <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope not. And, and certainly for our, our, for our characters, um, you know, the, the whole reason we signed on to find this this uh, uh, other planet was to try and save humanity in a sense. It's by no means an ideal situation, but uh, yeah, ho hopefully that is not the situation we're gonna leave this world in. Thank you, thank you so much. See you, you. future in Istanbul. Yes, please invite us and we'll come. <laughs> well, of course, of course, thank you. Bye-bye. Şimdi de sırada filmin diğer dev oyuncuları Kyle Chandler ve Damian Bisher bizimle birlikte olacak. Bir merhaba diyelim. Hello from Istanbul. Welcome to Haber Türk Studios. Have you ever been in Istanbul in Turkey? No, and I would love to go. I, I was just commenting on this is so incredible because we're we're usually there's someone comes to us, but we're going to you. We're, we're going around the world this afternoon. This is fantastic. How was working with director uh, George Clooney? Who? <laughs> yeah. It was very pleasurable, very enjoyable. It was a good experience. And uh, uh, it's a very good film. My wife and I have just watched the final project last night. Uh, and uh, he did a great job. Uh, he he did a bang up job and all all the pieces come together for a very enjoyable piece of entertainment for sure yeah i agree i i think uh i've been i've been a fan of uh, george's uh, films as a director and i think he's been doing all those films to get ready for this because this is without a doubt his best film as a director and one of his best works as an actor too 
He's fantastic, phenomenal. He created this character that is really, really moving and appealing and brave. And uh, is, is, and, and, and, and this, is, this is one of his best films. I, I, this is the one I love the most. How was the Netflix experience for you? I've done a I've done a few projects with Netflix. I imagine Damien has too. I imagine a lot of people have, and uh, it's always been it's always been a good experience. Um, uh, you know, there that's sort of like the umbrella that's around you. And I this this is this is my first time with Netflix, and uh, I think that a good producer, a good studio, is the one that provides anything the filmmaker needs to make a great film. And that's exactly what they did with George. This is a, a very ambitious project and, uh, and they make sure that, you know, we will all get all the tools necessary to make a, a great film. Uh, okay. Uh, what attracted you to this role in the movie? How did you feel when you read your character in the script? Uh, I was attracted to the role initially because they told me they were going to pay me. <laughs> I haven't seen that money yet, but I'm told they're going to pay me. <laughs> as far as the character, and uh, I like the idea that they chose for these two characters to be older. That's something that George had decided on. And um, it brought a value to the character due to the circumstances and what happens to the character that, that, that, that he's aware of... Uh, there's a certain wisdom from the heart that that that takes place that it's it's it's it's kind of an incredible an incredible situation when you're in love with someone it, and i said it's my little part of the story to me feels like a love story um and uh just as a whole though the, the whole cast is so fantastic and um and, and and working with damien and the parts that we got to play it, it was just it was a really great experience. Sorry to take up so much time, Damien. No, no, no, no, I, I, uh, I agree with you totally because uh, to me, it's, it's always very important to find a, a powerful story and then a, a, a, a, a solid character. And if you're lucky to be, you know, to find that in a project with such a big artist, multi-talented artist like George Clooney, then that's that's a that's that's a blessing. That's very rare to find, and of course, you know, to me, it's about the human experience and the, how many artists you're gonna meet and see. You know, so uh, everyone, and then the cast. You know, Felicity and David and Tiffany and of course Kyle. That that made the whole thing a dream, and uh, and I, I just I just couldn't be more proud. You know, I'm very very proud of this film. Would you leave the world in such a situation? No, my wife would kill me if I tried to leave the world. If I tried to get off this planet, she'd chase me down so quick it wouldn't be funny. And I'll tell you the first <laughs> thing I have to do is take the garbage out, do the dishes, get the vacuum. Oh boy, no, I couldn't. If I could, I would, but she wouldn't let me. <laughs> I don't know, my character, you know, Sanchez is a lonely man. So for him, it's, it's a very easy choice. Uh, and that's pretty much what, what I, you know, me as Sanchez was looking for just as many missions as possible to just escape reality. Uh, and I, I, I think one of the things that attracted me to this was precisely that you don't find so many Mexican characters in American films that can play an astrodynamicist uh, and be up in space. So that alone is very typical. And uh, it's, a, it's a big asset. It's a big, you know, plus for me. What are you talking about? You almost got us killed. You almost got us killed. Not really, not necessarily. Can we talk about this in, in, in some other time, Kyle, please? Thank you so much. See you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. We got this one done. Thank you.